I'm Helen Wagner, and this is my AP research project. So my question was, when should external enforcement in ecosystems outweigh the natural ecological biodiversity? So to begin, I want to give the correlation between enforcement and biodiversity. So the definition of enforcement is the use of services through agencies or foundations serving to protect or to inform on the surrounding environment. Enforcement comes in a multitude of different um, pockets, which is direct and indirect contribution from humans, provisional or regulatory um, enforcement, and civil and criminal law. So provisional is described as the energy outputs from the ecosystems, which is essentially resources. Regulatory enforcement is provided by acting as regulators, which is basically regulation and control of a certain entity, such as air quality or disease control. This can also be um, from civil and criminal law, which is when enforcement agencies are used, this is usually uh, effective in which is um, criminal law coming into play with the enforcement agencies. This correlates then with biodiversity, which is the variety of life in a particular habitat or system. This comes into two um, pockets, which is the natural biodiversity and implemented biodiversity. Natural biodiversity being what's subjected within the question, which is when enforcement agencies are not used, this is the untouched biodiversity, whereas implemented biodiversity is when an agency is then used, you have a unnatural biodiversity that's either man-made or from an enforcement service. So enforcement programs, um, they create a, research, a resource for environmental problems to help regulate biodiversity. According to enforcement of environmental law, this is the range of procedures and actions that employ on, a, on the ecosystem. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, these areas with federal enforcement efforts can make an extreme difference within our biodiversity. But environmental problems are growingly complex within the degradation. <coughs> ecosystems. So along with that, environmental degradation is from human activity. As you can see from the graph over to my left, it's a um, web of overconsumption, increased economic growth, and um, industrial activity, which then all leads to threats to biodiversity or a loss of it. Human activity essentially creates the need for these enforcement programs. There are over 217 million cases brought on from the EPA to help that protect and conserve the environment from um, just natural waste and even more cases for other programs. One of these programs being the Research and Conservation um, and Recovery Act, which then protected to uh, protected against hazards of waste disposal as well as conserved energy. Um, this idea is then that human activity is the reason that we need these environmental enforcement agencies, um, such as the ones brought on. So then just to help understand how they all correlate, um, the earth and biodiversity. So biodiversity is extremely important in human management areas and natural ecosystems. Without it, um, all ecosystems would essentially um, become extinct. But the biodiversity then includes all ecosystems, which is managed or unmanaged. Managed meaning the ones by these provisional or regulatory services, unmanaged being the natural biodiversity. As you can see from this graph, which is the web of how it all correlates, you have biodiversity, which is um, brought on from global changes or can be affected by global changes, and human being, which makes global changes, which is in a web of bio, it, it, which webs into biodiversity. Um, but it all correlates into how our ecosystems functions, and then if there's a need for an ecosystem service or not, which the main two that I'm talking about, which are on this graph, is the original services, and then on the bottom, the, regula the regulatory services. Um, as I was researching, though, there was a clear gap between the in-depth knowledge that these researchers were giving out data, and that there was a lack of in-depth study on the reverse side, which means that basically it's difficult to measure a sense of how much biodiversity is actually in a certain ecosystem. There's also a lack of clear data, and a lot of it is one-site information, meaning that there needs to be evaluation of what would happen to biodiversity if it had gone untouched, which was what I was prior talking about, which is the natural biodiversity. Um, if there had never been a enforcement um, agency, would biodiversity still be okay, or would we still need it? Um, this creates 
a gap within the ideas of enforcement and that there's data regarding the adverse effects of enforcement are scarce and sometimes unclear um, as the results of whether or not it actually helps biodiversity. In a lot of cases, um, the data show that they used a measure of biomass in order to understand whether biodiversity was um, being helped or decreased by these provisional services. So then that leads me to my hypothesis, which was that external, external enforcement will have a clear ability to outreach the current use for independent ecological biodiversity as the world continues to shift towards assisted needs, meaning that in our um, progressive society, these enforcement programs are needed as biodiversity can't stand alone as human contact continues to ruin certain sides of ecosystems. So the methodology used was in data collection from field researchers. They had their scholarly articles and data analysis founding upon the same variable of a reintroduction of a certain species. Um, this then they followed certain species to configure the patterns or the certain behaviors before and after enforcement was used in order to understand whether or not their enforcement program had actually worked or helped increase the biodiversity of a certain ecosystem. So the investigation was a quantitative result regarding, again, the biomass of the species within an environment by understanding whether or not um, or the number of species still in that certain ecosystem help them understand whether or not the regulatory system or the original system worked. So these research articles basically outlined their experimental process and then gave their results on um, what had happened, most of these being national results instead of focusing on one cumulative area. So the main authors that I used within an investigation, so for the Red Wolf Conservation um, Group was Adams, Castile, Murray, and Waits. This was a group investigation on the Red Wolf Enforcement Program. Um, it was a credible research paper which collected data from um, North Carolina sites and followed certain red wolves in order to see if their conservation program was going to help them or be detrimental to their um, ecosystems. The other one was from a marine resource assessment group of the United States, which was Ainsworth, Fulton, Kaplan, Loveland, and Rosaria. And this was a conservation biology division from the Northwest, basically following the fishery programs within the Gulf of California to understand whether or not this provisional services was affecting the biodiversity within California. And finally, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, which is the United States Conservation Agency, and it was it's a collection of individual data on a multitude of topics, mainly um, focusing on regulatory enforcement um, through their laws, as mentioned before, the air pollution and water pollution, as well as hazard waste laws. So then the results of these ideas so for the Red Wolf Conservation Program, it was basically an endangered species recovery program. They used certain collars on red wolves in order to follow their patterns and understand if their biomass was increasing or decreasing. Um, basically, the goal was to assess if there was a need for another recovery program within North Carolina for these red wolves. Um, this graph on the left shows that prior to the enforcement program, these red wolves and hybrid red wolves were decreasing and their population was starting to um, become extinct, where then after the enforcement program, they started to see that it was necessary, necessary to stimulate um, a new biodiversity within these wolf ecosystems. <clears throat> so then backing in with that reintroduction um, idea, which was a study of golden paintbrush plant species, and basically it was the restoration of a rare species in a conservation effort. Um, prior to this conservation effort, there had been a decrease in this population of these paintbrush plants. And after they were reintroduced into this area, their survival rate actually started to increase. And the numbers of prior to this graph were lower. And this table ends up showing that their survival rate started to increase in their certain sites that they were focusing on. One, though, of course, with enforcement programs, there comes adverse effects as the native plants that were um, being reintroduced along with the golden paintbrush were also um, 
harmed from the species as they were being reintroduced into and almost foreign land from when they had first been in this area. And then the biodiversity enforcement of the prior mentioned the sea lion action, which was basically in the Gulf of California, and it was to help implement new ideas on fishery to understand if they um, were needing management for their natural resources. Um, it focused on sea lions, the gillnets, and then the um, shrimp. And from these graphs, you can see, though, that after the enforcement agent was used, the, um, the species that had no management actually fared better. It's the star up on the top and the star up on the top on the left one, on the bottom one, and showing that actually this exploration of this enforcement program decreased the food level in this area, which then limited the biodiversity within this um, environment. So basically this just all shows that environment and the ecosystem processes within the services um, shown upon them has the ability to either increase biodiversity or decrease it. Um, but it's difficult to assess it clearly exactly what is going to happen without actually implementing the experiment. So this left table over here just shows the kind of the complicated web that comes along with these ecosystem processes along with these services. And it shows the original regulatory service as I've been mentioning of these ecosystem and enforcement services. So essentially, what does this all mean? Um, that there is a multitude of cases and enforcement from um, the Environmental Protection Agency and other agencies, but it is difficult to clearly understand whether or not biodiversity should be unnatural or natural with an enforcement program. Um, natural biodiversity can be self-sustainable, but in this progressive world that we live in, um, without these enforcement programs and services, biodiversity couldn't exist. So in other research, the methodology focused on specific ideas of enforcement in cases within the idea of a preventative measure, basically such as when they did the sea lion service, um, they focused on three main species in order to understand the food web going along with them to understand whether or not their original service was going to increase the biodiversity within this food web or decrease it. Um, but biodiversity can be maintained without these regulatory and provisional services, um, as the sea lion service showed that it actually was detrimental to um, the food web. So some limitations in <coughs> research. Um, the research varied ex um, in, within each data. There was usually only a focus on um, a multitude of enforcements rather than just one, as, such as original regulatory, um, as there's cultural as well. Um, but these regulatory and provisional services have an uneven amount of experimentation. Um, most follows the regulatory, such as the EPA, which has laws to enforce um, the increase of biodiversity. And then many sources also focus on the results of the enforcement procedures rather than what they were affecting within the biodiversity. So it was hard to discern what exactly was happening within the research. Um, but in the future, research needs to be conducted more upon the human impact of these ecosystems. Without humans, the original question is extremely valid as far as natural biodiversity. But humans are the reason that we need these original regulatory um, systems. So then the conclusion, the research upheld the belief that enforcement programs, whether it was provisional or regulatory, helped maintain a man-made natural biodiversity rather than the natural biodiversity which was untouched by an enforcement program. Um, but self-sustaining ecosystems aren't very likely in the society that we live in. Um, but there is a $20 billion um, commitment to services and regulations to ensure these ecosystems from the EPA. Um, but in some cases, enforcement can be detrimental to the environment. Um, and that's where the gap research came in, where that there were these provisional services that would have fared better um, if they had not touched in certain ecosystems. 
So then that brings to the big idea, which is that we should preserve every scrap of biodiversity as priceless while we learn to use it and help them understand what it means to humanity. By e. O. Wilson. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right, Kellen, very well done. A couple questions for you. Um, first, if you had more time or money or resources or whatever you may need, uh, what would be the next step you would want to take into adding to your project? I think I'd really like to dive into one idea of an enforcement program rather than the conglomeration of all of them. Um, I think it's hard to discern exactly which one would it, like, especially in an experiment that had original and regulatory enforcement agents, whether or not um, which one would work and which one doesn't, depending on the situation. Okay. And then finally, uh, what was, you, you showed a lot of sources, we're seeing them right here. What would you say was the most valuable source you used and why? Um, I would say that the Red Lion, or the Lion Conservation Group was the most beneficial because it showed the gap. Um, pretty much every source that I kept coming across showed that these enforcement um, groups were helping the environment um, or the ecosystem that they were experimenting upon. But this one actually showed that if they had never gone into this ecosystem, the food web would have never decreased and they would have never had a detrimental effect upon our ecosystem. So I think it showed the gap research very clearly as to what needed, what should have been.